Ferraris aren't really known for their reliability, but today I'm gonna try and change that on my F430, which was so unreliable, it caught on fire after seeing only around 10,000 miles. And while my car isn't the only one that caught fire, it's probably one of the only ones that wasn't parted out after catching fire. Instead, we replaced most everything that turned to ash and got it back up and driving smoothly, up to second gear. Now this problem could have been caused by the fire, but it is also a widespread issue on these cars. The fault itself lies within a broken potentiometer, which is the sensor that tells the automated manual transmission what gear it's in. The job in replacing the sensor isn't that hard, but what can be is actually sourcing the part. When we were rebuilding this car, we tried to order one, and it was on national back order, and the resellers that had one lying around wanted double the dealership price. Either way, instead of spending over $1,000 on a simple sensor, we could eliminate this part altogether if we just shift the car ourselves. So today, let's swap in a Cambio Manuel gated manual kit in our Ferrari 430. I've actually done this already on my Ferrari 360, and the job is way easier than it sounds because the transmission that comes in these Ferraris is a real manual. There's no removal of the transmission at all. So really, all we're doing here is removing all the electronic and hydraulic systems that move the gears, so we can move the gears ourselves. Now, I'm just going to permanently borrow all the parts off this kit from my 360 and while it might sound crazy to pull the kit from one car to put it in another it makes a lot of sense since this kit is easily reversible and while I could talk about every reason why my F430 is so much more worthy of this amazing upgrade it would take up way too much time here but if you guys have been following along at all you'll know that my 360 is a total basket case and no matter how much money or time I put into it, it leaves me with a new problem on the regular. Like right after we did a major service and replaced every single seal known to man, it sprang a massive oil leak out of the front crank seal. So while we were reverting it back to stock, we pulled off the front crank pulley for the fourth time here and replaced the seal. And I'm hoping this car won't leak oil again, at least for another three, maybe four weeks. But it is an old Italian car. There's no telling what will start leaking next. So it's very important we clean up our current oil mess that way we can confirm that our fix actually works and if there are any other leaks we can figure out where they're coming from so to tidy this all up I used a bit of release and a shop rag this has been my go-to cleaner as of lately because it works good in dirty engine bays and pretty much on everything else like even on this gross steering wheel since it doesn't contain any bleach ammonia or alcohol and no harsh chemicals it's perfectly safe on leather and other soft surfaces a few spritz into the towel and it's amazing how it cleans the grime off the wheel here I wiped all around the plastic trims, airbag cover, and even around the dash without any worry. Release is awesome because it works on nearly everything. And while you can pick up this bottle right here, the best deal is to get the concentrate because mixed, even at its strongest ratio, you can make about 80 spray size bottles, which only ends up being a little bit over a dollar per bottle. So you can stop buying a bunch of different cleaners to clean your stuff and get the one that'll do it all. That's release. I went ahead and dropped a link to the website down in the description. Make sure you use code SAMCRACK at checkout to get 10% off. Off your order. Now this job can be broken down into three main parts. The clutch pedal, the shift tower and cables, and the actuator that changes the gears on the transmission, which we're going to start with now, but really these can all be done whichever order you choose. As you see, I have the car currently on a lift, but this is really just so I can show you all the parts easier. As you'll see, we did a lot of this job on the ground and in some cases using jack stands. And some of the install I'm going to show you from the perspective of the 360 and some on the 430, but all the steps involved here to install this kit are so similar, it should help anyone attempt to do this on either car. I've taken this bumper off a number of times. It's super simple as long as you know where all the fasteners are. Start right here at this bracket. These two bolts are gonna come off. Then you go to the center where you'll find four bolts. And now there's a shim and some hardware back there. Make sure you don't lose it as you're pulling it off. Make sure you unclip your wiring harness right here if you're in the US and you have these bumper lights. Everything's symmetrical on the opposite side. Once it's all loose, this will literally shimmy right off. There's just one last wiring connector to take off in the center of the bumper. So what I've done right off the bat is I've loosened up my catalytic converter clamps here and back there. That'll give us just a tiny bit of movement left to right on our catalytic converter, which is very close to our F1 actuator. I went ahead and removed all four nuts holding on this heat shield here, just two on the bottom, two on the top. So this should just kind of get up and out of the way. There we go. 
And this is the guy we're trying to remove right here, our F1 actuator. It's this whole entire assembly. And again, it's held on with a bunch of fasteners like these nuts up here. But to make our lives easier, we're gonna remove all the hydraulic lines that run to it. I've got a little drain bucket here. I wanna start by just cracking open all the bolts holding on the hydraulic lines on our actuator here. At the time, I pulled these F1 lines from the actuator because it makes removal of all the parts very simple. However, if you do this, and if you ever plan on going back to F1, these lines need to go back to each respective spot. If any of the lines are swapped, the car won't drive. Because of this, I recommend you label each line before removing them or after you crack the bolts enough to let the fluid drain out, just keep it assembled and remove it together along with the block, which will be a bit of a balancing act, but definitely doable, especially with two people. Also, pulling out the air intake box will just make everything come out so much easier. And now for the exciting part. We got a little audience here waiting for us to pull off our F1 actuator. All the nuts, all the fasteners that are holding in place are off. The only thing holding it is a little bead of sealer in between this portion right here. And so we want to be gentle in removing this. It shouldn't be too, too hard. Uh, I do have a pry bar, and I notice that right here, in between the back part of the actuator and the transmission housing looks like a nice safe place to pry. You do not want to go anywhere near where the sealer is because you do not want to scratch that mating surface. So if we go, I've got this here. I'm just going to go real gentle. You see it's already coming apart. Let me get two hands on this and we'll just yank this sucker off. All right, here we go. I think it's coming. Yep. All right. We want to be gentle with this, obviously. All right, we're out. The back right corner of the Ferrari 360 looks like a jumbled mess, but don't let it intimidate you. It's actually very simple to remove this F1 system. Start over here where you're going to disconnect the junction here. These are some F1 fluid lines. You're going to take these nuts off, and once this is free, you can also go ahead and pull this quick disconnect, pull it backward, and it's literally going to pop the hose right off, and then that hose will come out from the bottom with ease. Then you're going to come over here where you've got the fluid reservoir, you've got the F1 pump and you've got all the solenoids that actuate the gears there's six solenoids one for each gear and then there are pigtails that run to each one of them that you can easily feel on the side plus an additional one up top so seven that run there one pigtail that runs the F1 pump here once all of that is disconnected you can go ahead and take off four nuts there's one here one back here and then two more in the quarter panel, you'll be able to feel them pretty simply because there's a ton of room back here, but you're not going to be able to see them. So use a mirror or something similar to help you see those. Once all four of those nuts are out, this whole entire thing will literally lift up and out with the hoses that we just disconnected from the actuator down below. There we go. I'm going to hold this with the plastic because this is a fiberglass hose. and You don't want to get that in your fingers. But otherwise, this should just come up and out. There it is. Now our manual actuator is a bit smaller than the F1 actuator, so it'll fit in here really nice. We just have to remove a couple quick studs before we put it in place. Now I have this nice stud extractor right here. You can see there's some rollers inside. So it basically just slips over the stud and it grips itself in place. You kind of just got to hold it and turn. I like this kit in particular because it typically doesn't mess up your studs like some of the more aggressive ones, but we do want to be real careful because we don't want to strip the outside threads. It will make it harder for one of these tools to work. And right there, I just felt it break and it's coming out just like if it were a nut or a bolt. And right there is one stud extracted perfectly. Here's the F1 unit. We just took off the car and we're replacing it with the manual one right here. Now, obviously, the F1 unit was actuated through the hydraulic lines that went in here. And our manual one has this lever. And then we're going to have shift cables that go to these arms and brackets here. And as the shift cables get pulled in and out, you'll see this will change our gear. Now it's super important to pay attention to our gear selector here and its orientation when we take it off the car. Pretty much every single Ferrari 360, when you shut the car off, it reverts back to neutral. That is its neutral position. So we need to get this gear selector in its neutral position. 
especially if it's sitting over like this or whatnot. Because if you were to install it looking like this, well, it's not going to work when you go to use it. So I'll go ahead. I will tilt our lever upward here. I'm just going to go ahead and push it in the center. And you'll feel it click in the place. It should be set and we can move the plunger back and forth just very gently and it's not going to click. actuators in place our gasket maker is still pretty fresh so all I'm doing is getting the nuts and then there's a bolt that the kit comes with that goes right there I'm getting them to touch the front of the mating surface here and I'm gonna leave it for the time being after about 24 hours we can go and tighten them all the way but while our gasket maker is still a little wet you just want it basically finger tight and that's why I'm doing this all by hand with no power tools And like I showed you before, this kit comes pretty much completely assembled down to the hardware. So here are our brackets, and those are going to mount into the holes that we just took the studs out of. And the hardware is already in there with these cable ties attached, so you know exactly how it sits. So this guy is going to sit pretty much like that. And then I've already got the upper one fastened in place in the upper stud that we took out there. It's really as simple as plugging and playing this thing. With our actuator in place, we can now run the shift cables from the interior to the car. You'll need to remove the right side rear fuse box cover and the center console in the interior. And with these pieces out of place, you can see very easily the factory plug that is in the hole where our cables run. We found it easiest to use something blunt and push the grommet from the outside of the car to pop it out of place. Now you'll bring the cables into the car and run them to the outside. This is just one of those steps where it's good to have two people. Mike's underneath the car while I'm fishing the shift cables in through that hole. He's pulling them and we're making sure the shielding isn't getting caught up on the metal that's in this hole. And once we get to the grommet, we're pretty much set. Once everything is through, the cables will need to be adjusted lengthwise through the grommet. So I just sprayed a tiny bit of silicone on the inside of the grommet to help them slide in and out. Now back under the car, you'll install the cable mount bracket in the factory holes. Then just mount the cables. It's really easy. And you might notice that the axle shaft is extremely close to one of the cable mounts. This is totally normal. Just make sure there's nothing rubbing. With the cables hooked up, we're about halfway through the install. Soon enough, we'll be able to see how this manual actuator works. But first, let's move to the front of the car where we'll install our clutch master cylinder and clutch pedal. Once all the fasteners are out, this will simply pop up and out, and you're going to have access to this little plate back here. Let me show it to you. We look from the corner right here. See that gold block off plate? That's where our master cylinder is going to bolt into. With the plate off, you can see in the center of the cabin there, that's exactly where our master cylinder is going to mount. Here I've got our clutch pedal and master cylinder, and I just went and separated the bolt from the arm here. Another reason this is a DIY-friendly kit is because every single piece of hardware comes pretty much pre-assembled. You're going to have to take it apart a little bit, obviously, to fit it in the car, but it basically shows you exactly where everything needs to be here. On our master cylinder, we've got a spacer here that'll allow us access to the uh, fluid reservoir that's built in and even down to the banjo bolt we get two crush washers in between here so this is loose we're going to need to tighten everything but it's all set up and ready to be put right in the car fitting our master cylinder in here is going to be a tight fit so to make our job as easy as possible i'll go ahead and take this bolt out i'm also going to take the cap off the reservoir and i don't want to mess up our rubber boot here when we go and install it. So I'll just take the nut off the end and pull the boot off. Also, let's go ahead and take off the banjo fitting here along with the two crush washers. Be sure not to lose one like I almost just did. This is something we should have done from the start, but it's not too late yet. You're gonna to wanna to take off the cap here that covers your brake fluid reservoir. It's gonna give you nice access to where we're installing our master cylinder and it's where we're gonna end up filling the reservoir from when it's installed. So take the bare reservoir, you want all the hardware off except for this little spacer at the end here, and then reach in through here, get it set right in place. 
The bottom bolt is pretty simple to get in. There's a ton of access on the bottom side. This top bolt is in a really, really tight spot. What I found works really good is if you have one of these, this is just a crow's foot, and I'm not even putting it on a uh, ratchet. I'm just gonna use it by hand. With our bolt snug back in place, it's really important that we seal things off here because we don't want to get any crud in our fluid reservoir. You can see I've already got the cap back in place. And next, we just have to get our banjo fitting put back where it belongs. So I've got it sitting here. Remember, there's two crush washers. Threading this in by hand takes a little bit of acrobatics. You can see I'm positioned here in the front trunk. I'm just reaching one hand in under here. I'm using my right hand to go on top. From here, just hand thread things. Go ahead and leave it as is. We don't have to worry really about any crud getting in there now. We'll run the lines here later. Right now, let's move into the interior. Climbing into the interior of the car, if we look at the pedal box now, and we look up and over where we were working on the other side of the car, you can see exactly where our master cylinder hangs out of, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna slip the boot over the master cylinder of the clutch pump shaft here so we don't lose it. Then I got the little nut that came off of it originally. To get the brake pedal removed, we're gonna have to slide it off the shaft here. That bolt is what holds the entire shaft together. It looks like a 10 millimeter and it is. So I've got a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench up here. Should help us at least get it started. Let's see, yep. All right. There's our bolt. Behind the brake pedal is this shaft here, and it's held on with a bolt that has a nut on this side. I got a little ahead of myself here, but I unbolted this bracket that's holding the brake pedal position sensor right on top right here. It's just held in with one 13 millimeter bolt. When I did that, it allows me to pull the brake pedal all the way out so it's no longer being held on the uh, rear shaft there it's just being held on the top one and now all we got to do is get this entire shaft slid over so that we can get the brake pedal out of the car and then we can put the clutch pedal and the brake pedal on the shaft now that I've done this twice on two different cars, I can tell you that these pedal shafts all act a bit differently when disassembling them. On the 430, I just took a socket that had a similar inner diameter of the shaft and pressed it inside with my palm. And with a little force, it popped out of place. On the 360, the pedal shaft was basically stuck. And while it would pop out with the tap of a hammer, there's no room down here for that. So I had to cut the plastic tube spacer around the shaft. And once it split, it released enough pressure to simply push the shaft right out of the bracket. Now here's the original brake pedal and the new clutch pedal. On the initial kits, like I got, you would have to cut your brake pedal down to the size that came with the manual car. But now Cambio Manuel does this for you, so it makes everything that much easier. So now all you'll have to do is take your pedals and a few shims that come with the kit and slide them onto the pedal shaft. With everything in place, it's now time to bolt our brake and clutch pedals back to their master cylinders. But since the clutch pedal is new, it's important to set the travel distance of the pedal. I took the measurement that was listed in the install guide and marked it on a scrap piece of wood. And then I moved the pedal to each end and I adjusted the stopper and just tightened it. Once it's set, you should be good to go. Just make sure to put back any hardware you originally took out. Now it's time for the exciting part and that's our shift tower, which comes all assembled. So all you have to do is take each shift cable bushing and press it into the lower part of the tower and bolt the tower in the factory holes that are in the frame. But don't go shifting at this point. We'll have to make a few adjustments here in a second. Let's grab the long steel braided line that comes with the kit. One end threads into the master cylinder in the front and then run it to the fluid block in the back. Now you'll need to pull out the factory fitting here and then just thread this line in. I remember when this hydraulic fluid, this very famous green can hydraulic fluid, if you go into a Mercedes like an S-Class or anything with that hydraulic suspension, you've had to buy this. This used to be 10 bucks at the auto parts store. I'm dating myself because now it's like $39.99 for the same can. Of course, I ordered it online, got it a little bit cheaper than that, but we're just gonna use a touch because this reservoir is very small. We wanna make sure that we're not overfilling anything. Now, we're gonna have to bleed it, so we're gonna probably add a little bit, but this basically just has to fill the reservoir and the fluid line that runs the length of the car. Can you What's see the red? Here? I can see the red. Red in the line here. This is really how you want to bleed one of these since it's fresh. It's the first time we're taking all the air out of the line. So normally, Scott, you know this, the F1 fluid is basically automatic transmission fluid. It's shh, red. Shh, shh, don't tell anyone. 
So basically we need to do this until we start to see uh, green fluid come through. And there it is right there. All right, so let's go ahead. If you do a top it off, Scott, do it a little bit more. Now we need to adjust our shift cables so that they hit each gear perfectly. The manual outlines precisely how this should be done. If you set the shifter in the right place and follow the measurements to a T, you'll only have to adjust this once. I sat in the cabin while Scott adjusted the cables. If you're just doing this as one person, you can use a wedge in between the gates and then go and adjust the cables. We want to make sure we can get in all the gears, right? So here we go. First, second, let's try reverse real quick. There's reverse, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And I'm doing it hard again because that's kind of like the Ferrari way. They want you to be able to hit the tip of these gates here to make that clunk noise. So you don't have to do that. You could just shift the car normally while you drive it, which is probably what a mild manner person like myself would do. But if you're a hardcore gated manual driver, you'd power shift it like this and you'd wreck your transmission, but you will not wreck your manual kit because this is all made out of, what is this made out of, Scott? Strongest material on earth. Yes. What it's made out of, what is Wolverine's claws made out of? With our swap complete, not only will this car be much more reliable, it'll be worth quite a bit more, and it's way more engaging to drive. Now, I was one of the early adopters of this kit from Cambio Manual, and I can tell you that the support has been amazing. Any questions I had during install were followed up with quickly, and as they continue to improve their hardware, they've sent some of these parts out to me to make sure I get the best manual experience. It's also the lowest price manual swap option by far, so I highly recommend you check them out if you've got a Ferrari 360 or 430 car. I went ahead and dropped a link to them down in the description box. I can't thank you enough for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Now it's time to go for our first test drive. All right, here's reverse right here. We just push the shifter down, go down, car goes backwards just fine. 